as she leaned over the chair to grab the window frame. Slappy reached up and grabbed her arm. Hey, slave. Is that other guy gone? The dummy asked in a throaty growl. I thought he'd never leave. Hey guys, Bjorn here again, Goosebumps number one Aussie fan, bringing you another book review. So uh, yeah, the next one in the series that I had commented to do second was, in fact, Night of the Living Dummy. So I've just finished up reading this one once again. I think I've read this one at least six or seven times now. And it is one of the best Goosebump books of all time. My favourite one from the series though is Night of the Living Dummy 2, and then probably Slappy's Nightmare, but of course, the classic is still amazing. So uh, I've got myself all prepared for this book review for you guys, wearing my uh, Slappy shirt. Even though I have like another five other shirts of Slappy, but uh, I think this one is the most appropriate. So uh, yeah, let's dive in, shall we? I just finished up reading Goosebumps Night of the Living Dummy, the story of Slappy? No, not Slappy. Well, technically Slappy is in the book, but Mr. Wood, Slappy's twin brother, which his real name is actually Wally, as we learn later on in the series. But uh, we'll get to a book review on that one day. But uh, seeing as though I'm doing the original 62 first, it could be a while. But uh, yeah guys, I've just finished up reading the book and uh, it is fantastic, it is definitely a uh, 10 out of 10 for Scare Factor, that is for certainty. This is definitely Goosebumps approved. Oh yes. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a great book. One thing I just have, you know, that is a little interesting is, um, I've always wondered why they decided to put Slappy on the cover of this one. I would have thought they would have used Mr. Wood as he is the main um, antagonist in this book, not Slappy. Slappy is in the book. This one's pretty much like introducing Slappy because Mr. Wood doesn't appear in, in, in any of the other books. I mean, he he is mentioned in uh, Slappy's Nightmare, I believe, or Bride of the Living Dummy. I can't remember exactly which one, but he's mentioned in one of them later on. But uh, yeah, obviously Slappy is the main antagonist in the Dummy series because he's in every single book. But um, yeah, this one's more of just like an introduction to Slappy. Um, but yeah, the story goes, it's about two twin girls. Um, they're bored at home one day and their parents, Miss, Mrs. Powell, tells them to go, you know, go outside, go for a bike ride, you know, those bikes that you got you never use. So uh, yeah, they go outside, you know, around, whatnot. And um, basically, uh, Lindy stumbles across Slappy in a trash can, and uh, she decides to call him Slappy. Well, I don't think it was actually a trash can, but it was, you know what I mean, it was a rubbish bin, <laughs> okay? And uh, she decides to call him Slappy, and then Chris gets jealous because Lindy's getting all the attention with Slappy. It's like, gee whiz, getting a lot of attention with a ventriloquist dummy? Hmm, what century are we living in? But uh, yeah. As the story goes, she's getting all the attention, so Chris gets jealous and wants to get a dummy of her own. So that's what her dad does. She gets a dummy for herself, and she names that dummy Mr. Wood. Now, it's funny because Slappy is brought to life with the magic words as you read them, obviously, but it's almost like Lindy never checked his pocket, because maybe he did have the magic words in his pocket somewhere, but, you know, never read them or whatnot. Or maybe she did somewhere in the book, but... Well, obviously it's not written, you know, in stone, but maybe she actually did at some point, but it doesn't say it anywhere in the book, and Slappy was alive the whole time. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think that's the story. I, I don't think that's how it happened. But, um, yeah, so uh, Lindy starts getting all these, like, gigs and stuff, performing with Slappy at, like, birthday parties and whatnot, and then um, Chris ends up getting a show, like, with Mr. Wood, like, on stage, and uh, I think Mrs. Berman was the name of the uh, teacher, I believe, or lady. And uh, yeah, so she um, does a performance with Mr. Wood on stage, but she's already read the magic words, so 
Obviously, it's not going to go according to plan. She, um, Mr. Wood is actually speaking on his own during this performance, so then she soon discovers that, yeah, Mr. Wood is alive, he's evil, and, um, I mean, he is pretty evil. I mean, he, like, choked the dog, like, tried to kill the dog, <laughs> you know? But then again, Slappy has obviously done some very bad things. I think a lot worse, actually. More creepy kind of things. But uh, yeah, Mr. Wood wants to make the girls his slave, and then one night they capture him, they bury him in the backyard, or... Uh, backyard? Oh god. Backyard, I believe it was the backyard. They bury Mr. Wood, and then the next morning he comes back, and um, he, you know, threatens to, like, you know, hurt the family and whatnot, and then they chase him outside, he gets hit by a steamroller, and uh, yeah, so he's pretty much killed. And then, um, yeah, the girls think it's all over, they go upstairs, and yeah, as I read in the last uh, few words of the book, Slappy is now alive. And uh, that's, I guess that's where the story begins, really. Th that's only the beginning, because Slappy is the main antagonist in the series of Night of the Living Dummy, you know? He's had like 10 books now. So uh, it's almost like Mr. Wood being destroyed just made Slappy worse. But uh, it does say on Wikipedia that, yeah, when Mr. Wood got destroyed, it did make Slappy twice as evil and a thousand times ruder and whatnot. So, um, yeah, and as according to the t Slappy's Tales of Horror, though, when Mr. Wood was destroyed, his spirit went inside Slappy. So, I don't know. There's something odd, you know, funny there. But when you read the, the actual book, like the original book, um, it doesn't explain that, though. You know, Slappy's just alive, so... It's almost like, because when you read the second book and the third book, you realise it's the same magic words that bring Slappy to life, so it's kind of like, huh, like that's a bit strange. So maybe when she read the magic words in the first book, Chris, when she, Chris read them, it brought Slappy to life. But he just, yeah, as I said, maybe he just sat down quietly, watched everything going on, and then right at the end when Mr. Wood was destroyed, he decided to, you know, come out and play. <laughs> But, um, yeah, guys, it's definitely a fantastic Goosebumps book. It's, like, probably the most nostalgic book cover in the Goosebumps universe. That's for sure. Um, but, yeah, obviously he's not the main antagonist dummy in it, but they still used him on the cover because he is the main dummy villain in the series, though. Um, but, yeah, it's such a great book. One thing I noticed is, like, it says in the book that Slappy has a chip on his lip, but on the book cover, he doesn't have a chip on his lip or, like, you can't see it. Or maybe, but I did read somewhere that apparently they added it in, in like a later edition. So I'm going to actually, after this video, I'm going to go check it out. But uh, yeah, apparently they may have like added like a little thing in somewhere. But I can't see it. But uh, yeah, apparently they did. I was reading somewhere, but oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe it was all fake. But uh, yeah, guys, um, that's pretty much all for this review. So out of 10 is most certainly an 11 out of 10. It is one of the greatest Goosebump books ever written. And Scare Factor is a, a 10, for sure. There's a lot of eerie scenes. And you know what? Slappy has the most eerie scene in this book, I must say. The part where Chris has a dream. Because it says in the book that she has a dream that she's, like, being chased or something. And then she wakes up and she, she sees Slappy sitting, like, in the chair by the window. So, uh, yeah. And he's just, like, staring at her with, like, these mocking grin kind of thing. That's creepy. That's probably the most creepy part in the book. You know what I mean? And it's with Slappy. So, uh, yeah. He is very creepy. I'd say he's probably the most creepy in the first one. But then in the other ones, he's obviously the one that's alive. So it's still creepy, but not as creepy as this. But, uh, yeah, guys. Um, that's, a, that's all for this uh, book review. Um, so the next one I will be doing, I believe, is Attack of the Mutants. And uh, I wasn't, like, specified exactly which Night of the Living Dummy book you wanted me to do. I just had someone comment Night of the Living Dummy, so um, if it was me, if you wanted to see the second or third one, I apologize, I do apologize for that, but obviously I've done the first one now. If it was Night of the Living Dummy 2 that you wanted to see, or 3, or Bride of the Living Dummy, or whatnot, just, yeah, comment down below in this video now, in this book review, and uh, yeah, just let me know, and if so, I will do that one after I do... Monster Blood, because I believe the next one I'm doing is Attack of the Mutant, Monster Blood, and then, um, yeah, Attack of the Mutant, Monster Blood, and if it was 9 Dummy 2 you wanted me to do, then I will do that one after I do the Monster Blood book review, but that'll be not for a few weeks, obviously, still, but I will get around to it. But, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in, um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, book review, um, I'll see you again soon.